Hey guys, my name is Matt and I'm a doctor working in London and today I'll be sharing with you guys everything you need to know about MRCP part 2. If you're on a journey to be an internal medicine physician, whether that's respiratory medicine, cardiology or oncology, this will be one of the core exams that you'll have to do. To be able to take this exam, you'll have had to take and pass MRCP part 1. If this is something you're unfamiliar with or you simply want to learn more about what the exam is, what the revision materials and strategy is like and how I passed my MRCP part 1 exam, I've made a couple of videos previously which I'll link in the description box below as well as in the bottom right hand corner of this video. But in essence, you have to have passed MRCP part 1 before you can take part 2. The focus of this video is really to give you all the information you need about MRCP part 2. And I'm a huge believer of early planning and really understanding the exam that you're signing up for, having a very early and strong revision strategy, and doing everything you can to maximize the chances of passing. So in this video, I'll give you all the logistical information you need to know about booking and taking the exam, what exactly the exam entails in terms of content, and how you can start preparing a revision strategy for your exam revision. This video is sponsored by Past Test, who I'm really excited to be collaborating with because their question bank was a huge asset to my revision for MRCP part one. They've kindly shared a discount code for all of you guys to use in your revision as well. There's a code down in the description box below, which you can use to get a discount. And towards the end of the video, when I go through a couple of revision resources, I'll show you how the question bank fits into my overall revision strategy as well. The MRCP part two exam is the second of two written papers that you need to pass to become a member of the Royal College of Physicians. Unlike MRCP part one questions, which tend to focus on clinical and preclinical scientific knowledge, MRCP part two tends to focus on the clinical aspect of care, including differentials, uh, investigations, and acute management decisions. Interestingly, the pass rate for part two is actually a bit higher. It's around 60 to 80% and you can check the MRCP website for the official figures. And this is significantly higher than part one. However, you need to bear in mind that those taking part two have already passed part one. In terms of who is eligible to take the exam, you need to have taken and passed MRCP part one. And this is an exam that is recognized in many countries around the world in the journey to become an internal medicine physician. However, I'd recommend checking with your national medical system. The format of the paper is two sets of three hour papers taken on the same day, each paper consisting of 100 best of five questions. This tends to be split across a morning and afternoon session with a small gap in the middle for a lunch break. And just like part one covers a wide range of medical topics, including cardiology, respiratory medicine, infectious disease, endocrinology, uh, so on and so forth. It's designed to test your clinical knowledge and your ability to make safe and accurate clinical decisions. There's less emphasis on the clinical science and more on clinical practice and understanding of the correct management decisions. And part two questions are typically more complex as well, often composed of two steps, a question body, as well as some investigations, where you can get questions about things like prognosis, management, risk factors, mortality benefit, and so on. An important differentiation between part one is that images are a part of this exam. So you should expect investigations such as ECGs, chest X-rays, and radiological investigations, in addition to things like blood tests and blood gases. Logistically, you need to book the exam on the official website of mrcv.uk, which I'll leave a link for in the description box below. And at the moment, if you're booking within the UK, it's £460, with international applicants being £616. However, this does tend to change, so I'd recommend just having a look on the website as well. There tends to be four sittings each year, and there are two modalities for this. You can either sit the exam in an official test centre or an exam hall, or you can sit it online. The online exam was piloted around two years ago, I was actually one of the first cohorts to have taken part one uh, online. And if you're curious to know what the online exam experience is like, I've made a separate video discussing my MRCP part one online experience, which I'll put in the bottom right corner here. Remember that you have to book your exam two months in advance. So definitely check the portal early and make sure you mark the date that you have to book it by. And typically after taking the exam, uh, the results will come out after six weeks, although it's been known to come out earlier than this as well. How you plan your revision and follow through with your strategy will be absolutely critical to your success. It's super important to understand what exactly the exam entails, how you need to study for it, what materials you need to study, and what methodologies and platforms or resources are available out there for you to use. Understanding all these factors and putting it into a personal study strategy that works for you alongside your busy work schedule is super important and the earlier you can plan this, the better. In general, most applicants need around two to four months of revision time but this obviously does differ based on your clinical knowledge. There are loads of revision materials out there, almost overwhelming. There are question banks, there are flashcards, PDFs, books. I guarantee you it is impossible to go through all of them and it's important to be effective with your time and make sure you're studying with the right materials and as smart as you can be. 
After going through all the resources, speaking to doctors who passed the exam, as well as looking through online forums, I found that there were four main study resources that people tended to use. Question banks are one of the most commonly used resources for MRCP part two. There are many different question banks, including past tests, past medicine, BMJ, all of which have different pros and cons. They also differ slightly in things like cost, utility. So some of them might have a knowledge bank, some of them might have flashcards, some of them might have some additional videos or links. One example of this is the past test question bank, which has a huge range of questions, mock papers for the MRCP part one and part two exam, as well as videos and a knowledge bank full of descriptions of information for conditions. Having these in-depth explanation of questions is really helpful to understand what you're getting wrong when you're studying for the exam. And reading through the micro learning guides as well as some of the videos that have been created on conditions can be a really useful way of consolidating your knowledge around certain conditions. Whilst they do have question banks for all medical exams from medical school to postgraduate specialty exams, I found the MRCP revision materials really useful. And if it's something you wanted to try out, I've left the discount code in the description box below for you. Second, there are a huge range of books and PDF documents available, which will give you an in-depth explanation of various conditions and specialties. Whilst this can be excellent for deepening your understanding of conditions, for example, if you're looking to try and understand uh, supraventricular tachycardias, Sometimes there can be too much information or information beyond the scope of what you need for MRCP. So it's important to be quite strategic and smart about what you include and what you don't include in your revision guides. The book I've seen used the most for MRCP, as well as what I use for part one as well, is the essential revision notes for MRCP. I just have the book over here actually, but it's a fantastic resource from past tests, uh, who, which has been edited by Prof. Philip Kalra, who I believe is one of the clinical advisors for past tests. And it's just, a fantastic resource full of information from every condition, every investigation and management that you need. Like I said, it can be a lot of information and I'm always a bit hesitant about materials such as books because when you're reading, it's very much a passive form of learning while I prefer active forms such as answering questions or solving problems, but it is really useful to supplement your learning and understanding as well. Third, I've seen a lot of MRCP part two revision courses spanning from half a day to a couple of days, which seeks to give you a crash course of everything you need to know for part two. And whilst I've heard some good things about courses, I personally don't think that it's necessary. I think very much that part two, just like part one, is a very uh, academically heavy exam that you can very much do with self-study and self-learning. So I wouldn't personally recommend it, but again, if you are the kind of person who benefits from that peer-to-peer -peer learning or learning from uh, lectures, that might be helpful for you. Finally, there are the external and third-party revision materials and platforms, and this is things such as creating mind maps or already created mind maps, flashcards, uh, and uh, various platforms on mobile apps, for example. If you'd like to find out more about how I use them in part one, I'll link the video down uh, in the bottom right again below. If you're curious to know how I applied those tools for part two, I will be releasing a video uh, shortly talking about my personal study strategy for MRCP part two, the tools I used and the calendar revision strategy and study schedules that I had, as well as perhaps sharing some of my materials and study schedule if that's helpful for you guys. If so, leave a comment down below and make sure you're subscribed so you can keep up to date with my next video when it comes out. So now that you understand what exactly logistically the exam entails, the content and what the materials out there are like, what can you do now to start studying for MRCP part two? The most helpful thing really is going to be understanding how far you are from where you want to be on the day of the exam. How good is your baseline clinical knowledge? Where are your weak spots? And what are your strong specialties? This is an exercise I recommended also for MRCP part one, understanding where you were perhaps stronger in cardiology, respiratory medicine, or where you might be weaker, such as infectious disease, very much applies for part two as well. But actually now we have a bit more information because we've passed part one. So what I would really recommend you to do is to have a look at your part one score, try and review your individual sections for how well you scored and perhaps whether there are any specialties that you think that you scored particularly weakly on, for example, and come up with a schedule that works for you, but also allocates enough time for you to cover those weaker specialties. One way of planning your study schedule is thinking about how much time you have, how much time you want to spend, such as uh, anything between two to, to four, five, six months, how much time you have in those six months every day on a busy working schedule to be studying for the exam, and then look at the study materials you want to use. So for example, if you have one book and a question bank full of 3000 questions, how do you distribute that across the two months that you have to study? How many hours a day is that to complete your revision? 
and what resources are you going to use now versus in a month or two's time. And just wrapping up now, going back to my initial point, having a strong study strategy will take you a long way to maximizing your chances of success. If you know your weak points and your strong points and where you need to spend your time revising, you'll know exactly what you need to do and you have an idea of how much work you need to do to pass the exam, then you're halfway there because the only thing left to do is to actually do the studying. Plan early, study smart, maximize your chances of success. That's what I think. At the end of the day, the MRCP part two exam is a difficult exam and you do need to put in the work and hours to study hard for it. However, if you study smart, work hard, you can maximize your chance of success very early on. I'm also currently in the process of studying for MRCP part two exam. It's definitely been really interesting so far. And what I'm planning to do is publish a video soon after this one about my personal study strategy for approaching the MRCP part two exam. And what this will include is my study schedule, how I broke down each individual week and month into my revision and the revision resources that I used, uh, some of which I've touched upon in this video today. If this is something that might be helpful for you, definitely stay tuned and feel free to let me know if there is anything you want to know or you might find particularly helpful. Otherwise, that's it for today. I hope you found this enjoyable and I will see you guys in the next one.